Uh, snow day. Hi, I'm Charlie. And I'm Liz. And this is the Adventure Closet. And today... We are going to Fortson Mill, which is an abandoned mill and ghost town. Hi. It is a beautiful snowy day. We brought the, uh, the snow plow out for a little drive. Not too far from our house, so we're good. It is currently snowing. And uh, we are going to walk that way to Fortson Mill on the White Horse Trail. Ready? Yeah. Good. For what? Uh, adventure. Heck yeah. I'm always <laughs> ready for adventure. Look Who at are this. you talking to? Oh, I'm talking to you. Me? Yeah. You talking to me? Yeah. Okay. Looks like nobody's gone this way today yet. Or if they have, it's already filled up. This is the White Horse Trail. Uh, this originally was a railroad. That's why it's so. That's why it's so straight and long. But it's part of the uh, Rails to Trails. They've changed it into trails. They recently done a lot of work on this and uh, widened it so that multiple people can be on it at the same time. Pretty cool. The mill we're going to, Fortson Mill, and it's one of the, the stops that the train made along the way on this uh, this railway. It goes from Darrington to Arlington and meets up with the Centennial Trail in Arlington. And then from there you can go north or south on the Centennial Trail for many more miles. I think it's, uh, what do you think it is, like 26 miles? It's, yeah, it's uh, just under 30. Just under 30 miles. We will not be doing all of that today. <laughs> <laughs> we just want to say thank you to all our subscribers. Um, all like, a lot of you. You guys uh, make this so fun. You do. Yeah. Love reading your comments. Yeah. You know, some people have been really saying some cool stuff lately, um, which is so encouraging. And uh, uh, a lot of people have told us that what we're doing is really unique to a lot of adventure channels. And that's a huge compliment to us because we want to try and be original and... Um, give people something interesting to watch, especially days like this when it's snowing outside. We are so fortunate to live in this beautiful area and a lot of people are just stuck in their houses when it's weather like this. It's too difficult to get out to the mountains and you know, we have it right at our hands and uh, it's worth sharing, isn't it guys? Yeah. Quite beautiful out here. This is not our usual trail that we go on. Uh, we tend to steer clear of the popular ones. like something ran across the snow here. Oh, 
Oh, I guess that's a bunny rabbit. Hopefully you can make that out. Yeah. Or a cat. Oh, it actually went down and then came up right here. Or No, it went down right here and came up and back across. No. I don't know. Hey, babe. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. <laughs> You're lucky you missed. <sighs> There's lots of neat stops along the White Horse Trail. Like there's um, down here is a fish hatchery, um, which they'll let you tour when they're open. You just drive on in or walk on in and usually they'll let you go through it. Um, kind of a neat stop. ponds um, where they get to float the logs and uh, yeah, sometimes you'll see like in spring you'll see a lot of red-winged blackbirds here some ducks occasionally uh, some cranes sometimes if you look in the trees you'll see some eagles I believe that's an eagle's nest right up there so Pretty cool place to go bird watching. Piece of gear that we've been thinking about getting is cross country skis. Uh, I think it would be really fun on trails like this where uh, pretty flat, you got a lot of snow this time of year. Uh, seems like it would be a pretty fun sport to try out. Um, if anybody has any tips on good skis to get, uh, you know, any other tips on cross country skiing, let, let us know. And, and preferably for me, I need some skis 
that have a very large weight limit. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, let us know your experience and what you know works. We're pretty serious about investing in something good. Yeah. Thanks guys. Cold hands and catching a drone, not always the greatest thing. I usually good at catching it, but uh, this time it uh, didn't want to land, so I had to reach up for it. And as I was reaching up for it, it came down and got my finger. So, yeah. This is how we become experts. We look stuff up. I've and, already researched this place. And then we tell you about it. <laughs> that makes us sound smart. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny part is about it, my memory is so bad, I have to look up a, a paper that I wrote about this mill so I can remember the facts. <laughs> I don't know if it's a memory problem or we just go to so many places. I think we go um, to so many places. It would be hard to remember everything. <laughs> So I'm reading my own notes so I can share with you guys. Yeah, full disclosure. We don't know everything about any, every, wait. Full disclosure. We don't know everything about everything, but we do know how to find information. So that makes us smart. No, I'm or kidding. that makes Google smart. Yeah. What would we do without Google? It's kind of sad, because I remember when I was younger, you know, you would, you just wonder about stuff. Like, like you would ask your friends and if they just made something up, you had to go along with it because who knows um, if they're right or not. Like you couldn't fact check people back in the day. Um, but now you have Google and you have to trust that Google is the friend that's telling you that it's correct. I'm really bad at, I come up with really off the wall questions and I'll ask this guy and he'll be like, why don't you just Google it? And then I'll just be like, eh, I'd rather just wonder. <laughs> and I'm the guy that's like, oh, well, hang on. I will Google it. He has to know. I, well, I have to let her know. It's good to let yourself wonder sometimes. It is. You don't have to have all the answers. You don't, but I mean, sometimes, sometimes it helps not knowing. Like, where's the wonder anymore? Like, I wonder what the weather's gonna be like tomorrow. You could ask Google, or you could wonder and find out tomorrow. I wonder if Wonder Bread still tastes as good as an adult. It's probably really sugary. Yeah. I guess we're gonna have to do a taste test. Hmm. I wonder. Join us next time for the Wonder Bread Taste Test. <laughs> Show them this view. Oh yeah, check this out. We're sitting here talking and admiring this view. This is the uh, North Fork of the Stillaguamish River. Um, no bird flew away. Um, squirrel. So, hey, come on, let's go get a closer look at this river. Uh, let's go this way. Don't want to fall, don't want to fall. Somebody's been here since we were before us. Pretty. It's kind of dangerous walking here. I don't want to slide into the river. Oh, a big gust of wind coming. Look at those trees just swaying in the wind. It's so beautiful out here. The 
tree's gone. People had this tree that had a bunch of sticks on it. And uh, you can climb out over the water and I think people would just jump in. But looks like it's gone. This river keeps getting closer and closer to the mill every day. There's the main trail, and we're heading off this way. There's a cute little bridge here. Look at all those ducks. Oh, and a bald eagle. There's the bridge. This is the, another one of the force and milk ponds. This is probably the main pond. Um, this is, they have a fishing derby here for kids, and they stock this pond. So they say only kids can fish here, and no grown-ups allowed. What if you don't identify as a grown-up? Did I just find a loophole? I think I did. <sighs> nice and peaceful here. Along the pond. Hear the kingfisher in the distance. The actual mill is right over there. We'll go show you that too. I think you guys will like that. It's a lot of graffiti on it, but Still, it's pretty cool. A lot of history too. This, uh, this used to be matched with that tree over there and they were the most beautiful trees. And either last year or the year before, one of the two have fallen. And if you look, it looks like his head and his arms and his legs. Looks like he's just fallen down. Kind of sad, because uh, these were gorgeous fern-covered trees. And now that that one's gone, it doesn't, it looks like the ferns are, are no longer on uh, that big one back there. Um, but still, I think this is really cool how it looks like a person just laying back. Oh, we just made it to the mill. There's the actual mill itself. We'll go over there and explore that. I love old trees, big trees, fern covered trees, trees with moss on them, all sorts. It's really neat to be able to just like look at these things that have just stood there for over a hundred years. Like, like these two trees were probably here when this mill was, it was running. Um, Yeah, think about that. Just those trees have seen this mill in operation 
and, and survived. And they just had that view right over there of the mill in operation. And I believe there used to be houses over in here and there was, there was a general store over there at one point. It's pretty cool. I think this side of the bridge is a very beautiful side of the bridge. This time of the year is so great because walking by, the foliage has already fallen and you can see the mill through the trees. And it just adds mystery to it. It's beautiful in the fall as well. So just going past the mill a little bit first, I wanted to show you this, this little spot over here. Um, they're gonna create a nice little trail system over here. Uh, and there's a lot of little artifacts. I found a tricycle out here on top of a stump once, a really old one. It's really cool, I'll link a picture here. Um, but if you check this out, this is a, that thing, that little building right there was a vault for the store that used to be here. And I'm not sure if I can get to it this way because it looks like the water's up. disappointed if I didn't get to it right so let's see let's see if I can do this without getting wet I could just go around that way but that's the easy way these trees will help me won't you guys Looks like there's a bunch of garbage in it, unfortunately. Okay, I made it. Made it across. Now let's see what's inside. Bunch of old graffiti. Looks like there used to be shelves on the wall back there. But yeah, and a little electrical box up top there. Quite interesting. It's a shame people are using it as garbage dump. But if you look, it's uh, steel lined and then concrete around it. Like they didn't want nobody getting in this thing. It's cool, cool little shape. Hopefully, it uh, looks like the graffiti is just kid stuff. Well, yeah, so a bunch of garbage. Looks like somebody's been hanging out in there. I'll show you around the outside of it. cable right in there and some holes for where the power came in I don't think that's up to code <laughs> nothing really on this side there's a couple of old cars back in here and such uh, but Gotta leave something for you guys to explore. All right, time to go back across this and uh, meet up with Liz and go check out the mill. Oh, 
Oh man. <laughs> I wasn't recording, but I just went like ankle deep in that. Actually almost shin deep. <laughs> My shoe is now filled with water. Nasty water. Good times though, right? A little frostbite never hurt anybody. Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> All right, let's go find Liz. Last time I saw her, she was standing right there. She must've gone to explore. Yeah, so there's a parking lot right here. You could actually drive up to this place, but uh, we, we didn't want to drive here because you know, a little bit of snow on the ground. Rather not drive more than we have to. Plus, it's good to get out of the house. Get your hiking legs in, even if it's flat. As we leisurely hiked into the former site of Fortson Mill and its little town, I tried to imagine myself going back in time to a place that once held hope and promise of prosperity, bringing my imagination way back to 1905 when a couple of fellas had a dream to turn their 113 acre plot of land seven miles downhill from Darrington, Washington into a state-of-the-art lumber mill. The Makahi and Makahi Mill Company made a profitable start, bringing in a population of 130 people in just five short years of operation. Although I was staring at crumbling concrete adorned by moss and ferns, it was well over a century ago that the sounds of buzzing saws and the smell of fresh sawdust must have permeated the senses. It must have really been something to be proud of, especially if your own blood, sweat, and tears were mixed within those deteriorating concrete walls. Only a few years prior to the mill's construction in 1901, the Northern Pacific Railroad had reached all the way from Arlington, Washington, to the town of Darrington. What a feat that was, considering how dense the old growth forest was, as well as the treacherous landscape it had to be forged through. You can still see the railroad bed today as it runs parallel to the ghostly town of Fortson. However, there are no more tracks, just a long, straight walking path that we know now as the White Horse Trail. Now, as our history lesson progresses, it is 1914 and Fortson officially gets its forever name as the Makahi Mill changed hands to Fortson Mill Company. But only briefly, by 1917, there was a fire at the sawmill that led to the dissolving of the Fortson Company and a quiet five years without operation. It wasn't until 1923 that the little town got a second wind, Clement and Kennedy Company Mill, took over and the noise began once again. By 1926, there was phone service, a company store, bunkhouses, a post office, three saloons, a Sunday school, the mill, and several homes. Population had sprung to 320 at this exciting time. Funny thing though, the name Fortson stuck despite new ownership. While things continued to look up for the town of Fortson, a bad storm struck and washed away the road from the town of Hazel to the west. It was 1932 in the midst of the Great Depression and the little mill town just couldn't survive. It was repurchased 1954 when it was moved upriver to Three River Mill. That later turned to Summit Timber and now is operated as Hampton Lumber Mill in Darrington to this day. As the work moved along, so did the people and many of the structures of Fortson. Some buildings were relocated to nearby Whitehorse. All that remains today are a few walls of the mill and a platform seen across the pond where the debarking machines once peeled away the skins of ancient logs before loading them on rail cars to be sent down below. The mill was run off of steam and you can still see the round holes in what's left of the walls where the steam pipes were ran. Also just below the mill is the largest of the two mill ponds in the area. You'll see a fish ladder down there and that is where the water wheel was that provided electricity to the lights. I don't know if you've seen um, our video from Sunset Mine. 
but this same graffiti piece was at Sunset Mine, um, which is pretty far away from here, considering. But I'll link that video up in the corner here for you. Check it out. We're gonna go in the side door. This is Fortson Mill. Apologize if there's offensive graffiti here, but uh, there's a lot of graffiti here. How many people have been having fires here? So then through this doorway, there's another big room that used to have a roof on it, I'm sure. But check this out. This tree has grown here. Inside this room. This thing hasn't been in use for many, 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 many years. But it's pretty cool that this full-size tree is just grown in here and it's kind of grown at an angle. It's great for photos. I just wish that all the graffiti wasn't here. So it still gives you kind of that old look. But it's still, still really cool. That bright is light. That bright is light. That light was bright. Light Bright. You remember Light Bright? That adorable doll with the yarn hair and the rainbow all over. She had a unicorn. <sighs> Memories. I had one and my siblings threw it out onto a roof out through my bedroom window. 80s kids, 90s kids, you remember the Stussy? The Stussy? The S that everybody drew on their binders? Yeah, it lives here at Fortson Mill. So we're back at the, the mill pond over here. Um, when we first saw the mill pond, we were over that way. There's this giant log that's just been sitting here for years in the, in the mill pond there. And I think it's one of the coolest looking things. Just a big monster tree log stuck in the middle of the pond. There's your Liz for scale. Do that backwards. <laughs> so this is the coolest part of the, uh, the mill. This, uh, this big building here. There used to be buildings back that way um, a long time ago. And uh, there's another pond down this road. We might actually hit up that pond. But uh, I always wondered what this little carved out section was for. Like, it, did they just dig in the hill for just to get gravel for their roads or something? Or was there something there? Some more of that pond. The first pond we ran. Mills back that way. And uh, we're gonna go to the, the big pond. This way.
out here in uh, in Darrington, there's every afternoon there is a breeze at around 4 30 5 o'clock and uh it's pretty cool like just uh, it's really nice on a hot summer day but right now it was so cold oh my gosh um it's weird my theory and i'm not a uh not a professional about this theory is just like a fun theory I have is that the air is cooling enough on the mountains because we're surrounded by mountains in here that the the air temperature drops and creates a gust of wind uh, in the evenings but I think that theory has been proven Liz thinks that theory has been proven but that's my theory I made that up I came up with that myself Science! <laughs> oh, here's that cold breeze. Ooh. Used to be a dock right there. At some point. All right, we are headed back. It is, temperature's dropping. On a clear day, you can see White Horse Mountain right there. You can kind of see some mountains right here. Well, White Horse is the beautiful mountain. It's usually there. If I remember, I'll throw in a picture here of what this looks like on a clearer day. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. Give us a like to so let us know that you like this video. And uh, share it with your friends. Love to have more people along with us. It's always good. A friend of yours is a friend of ours. Yeah, except for that one guy. Yeah. <laughs> He's barely a friend of yours. You know who you're talking about. We'll put up with them now. Yeah. We have to. Uh, yeah, Mike from the office. He really wants you to share this video with him. You should do it. Sally from the gym. She wants you to share this video with her. Don't be weird about it though. Just share it with her. Be like, hey, check this video out. It's pretty cool. <laughs> also, I really think you should introduce your friends to YouTube. Not enough people watch YouTube. YouTube's great. Um, it's a community, not just a bunch of videos. Because you can talk to us and we'll talk to you. Try talking to Will Smith or something. I bet you he doesn't talk back. I bet people get lucky on Twitter sometimes, uh, tweeting at Will Smith. Well, yeah, I'm sure that happens, but but we'll talk to you <laughs> on a personal level. It's not gonna be our assistant talking to you until we get really big, which I don't see that happening soon, but man could dream. Well, that was cold. I was gonna say that was fun. Oh, okay. Well, that was fun. That was fun. Yeah. Glad you guys can come along with us. Uh, Saw some cool sights at the mill mm -hmm. and got to walk around and play in the snow for a little bit. Yeah, I hope you guys like the history of this area. Um, really cool. Yeah, thanks for watching. Um, if you like this cool kind of video, uh, hit that subscribe button and uh, that way you'll get notifications. Well, you gotta hit that bell too, I guess. And that way you'll get notifications 
when we post a new video every Wednesday. Oh, and you guys, I almost forgot to tell you, we're on TikTok now. Oh no. You gotta find us at the Adventure <laughs> Closet on TikTok. We're slightly addicted. Yeah, TikTok's fun. It's so fun. So yeah. just little goofy videos from us. Yeah, there's some some cool sentimental stuff, but there's also some pretty funny stuff that we, we throw up there. We just do what we do when we do it. Yeah, that should be our slogan. <laughs> we just we do what we do when we do it. We just do what we do when we do it, guys. Yeah. yeah. That's the adventure closet. Maybe we should make a t-shirt. <laughs> <gasps> yes. Do you, guys, do you think we need merch? Are we getting uh, too YouTuber-y? Yeah, let, let's hold off on merch for a little while. Okay. Okay. I know. But <laughs> thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Bye now. Bye. No. She just screwed that whole thing up for us. Because she didn't say bye now right. I'm going to have to clip that and be like, bye now. And it's going to be weird. All right, I got to go catch up. <laughs> so Liz says she's tired of cooking. But what Liz doesn't remember is I bought pizzas. <gasps> You bought pizza? <laughs> yeah. Yes, you did. <laughs> so, I can cook. We were just having the age old argument of what do you want for dinner tonight? And yeah. And she forgot about the pizzas that I bought yesterday. So, <laughs> I think we're having pizza tonight. Yes. Yeah. All right. Bye now. Bye now.